So let's talk about Earth's crust and how it changes over time. Um, we, we talked about previously that the Earth is differentiated and that um, this happened as the planetesimal Earth cooled and uh, locked in the differentiated structure. Um, but this isn't fixed forever. So while the layers are stable and not changing, the crust is a place where there's actually a lot of change uh, relative to the rest of the planet. So we would say that the Earth's crust is young compared to the Earth because it's always changing. It's being turned over, kind of in the same way that um, you might have heard that your skin or you know the cells in your body, some of them are younger than you because they're always being generated. So even though the Earth is um, older, the crust is what we would call younger. So I just want to make it clear. That's what I mean when I say that the crust is young is that it's been recently changed. So um, the moon, as we know, if you look at the moon, you see the man in the moon or some cultures see other patterns like the rabbit in the moon. And that is because the moon is heavily cratered. Um, but on the earth, there aren't quite as many craters as there are on the moon. And that's simply because some of them have been destroyed by the crust being reformed. So some questions for you. Um, which of these factors do you think is most important to keeping the Earth's crust young? All right. So I'm seeing most votes for option number one, that plate tectonics is the primary thing that keeps Earth's crust young. And I would say, yes, that is the underlying factor. Um, it actually impacts all of these first four um, options. So plate tectonics is the reason that we have rift and subduction zones that create new land on the seafloor, fault zones that change the crust on our surface, and then volcanoes that actually push new rock up. So all of these things are true. All right, so um, what is plate tectonics? The theory basically says that the crust is separated into individual plates. Um, they're separated by these plate boundaries and where they meet at plate boundaries is where a lot of geological activity happens. So this is a map of all of our different plates. Um, as you'll notice here in Eugene, Oregon, we are on the near the edge of the North American plate. So um, this sort of situation where the crust of the earth is fractured into these individual plates that are free to move around. This only happens if there's enough water in a planet's crust. Um, so this um, is a relatively, uh, let's see, I don't know what, what I wanna say. It's an idea that's still being tested. So this is an idea that is still um, an area of active research. And here's an example of a paper from 2017 that notes that, um, they, I think it's really funny, they call the surface of a planet, the crust of a planet, a lid. So they say there's two ways that a planetary lid can behave. Um, the first way is that you have plate tectonics and it's broken up. Um, but the second way is that you don't. And if you have an Earth-sized planet such as Venus, um, you're likely to develop plate te tectonics early on as long as you have enough water. And so um, when we look around the rest of the terrestrial worlds in the solar system, they do not have plate tectonics. We're the only ones that do. And so that could be because Venus has lost a lot of its water over time and doesn't have plate tectonics in its crust anymore, or sorry, water in its crust anymore to support plate te tectonics. But it might have had enough water earlier in its evolution. And so it's possible that maybe Venus used to have tectonic plates. And that's something we just don't know for sure. Okay, so I wanna talk about three different ways that tectonic plates can um, move around against each other and interact to create new features. Um, so there are this, I'm just gonna walk through this. The plates can move, they can collide, they can push under each other, they can push up mountains, they can grind together and they can open holes for lava. So this first um, way, plates pushing under each other, we call that process subduction. So this is when one plate is diving under the other. Um, and the Cascade Volcanoes are a good example of features created by subduction. So we are at the, like I said, the edge of the North American plate and the um, Juan de Fuca plate from the ocean is subducting underneath the North American plate. And this is called the Cascadia subduction zone. And it's been responsible for creating the Cascade Volcanoes. 
And as you may know, it's also building up a, a lot of stress right now. It has, um, it tends to move in fits and starts. Um, plates are, you know, they're made of rock. So there's a lot of friction between them. So things don't usually just flow smoothly. Instead, they'll kind of slip and stick, slip and stick. And right now we've been in the stick for a long time. And so when they eventually slip, um, there's folks that think that that will trigger a huge earthquake that we call the big one. So if you wanna know more about that, I can share some articles with you. Okay, so way number one, subduction. Um, way number two, plates can grind together um, where neither plate is moving toward or away from each other, but instead they're sort of just sliding against each other. Uh, the San Andreas Fault is a really good example of this. And we call this a strike slip fault. Another thing that can happen is that um, we can push up mountains by uh, plates moving against each other. This should no longer say strike slip fault, it should say continental subduction. Um, the Rocky Mountains are a good example of continental subduction. So instead of having uh, two plates that are pushing each other down and popping up um, mountains, instead you can have them grind against each other and that can still create uplift. So the Rocky Mountains completely landlocked, um, created by sub, uh, continental subduction. Okay, so then there's something else that's very important to shaping the features on Earth's surface, and that's erosion. So even once you have created mountains by um, uplift, like the Rocky Mountains, or by subduction, like the Cascadia Range, you still need erosion to sculpt that rock over time. This can happen from wind, water, ice, and it also serves to erase surface features. So the um, erosion can essentially erase signs of craters. If there was some sort of meteor that came down and struck Earth's surface, um, you know, lava could flow over it, and then you would no, no longer see that that crater had ever existed. Or maybe wind fills it in with sand over time, and so you no longer see the crater or water washes it away. So lots of different ways that erosion can erase surface features like craters. All right, so um, we can distinguish between craters that are new and craters that are really old. And erosion has only had time to erase the old craters. But new craters abound on the surface as well and we can find them. Um, so there are about 188 craters, which we would consider relatively young because they haven't yet been erased by erosion. So here's an example. This is Meteor Crater in Arizona. Um, it's about 50,000 years old. Uh, the meteor was about 160 feet wide and the crater is about a mile wide. So a small object creates a much larger blast zone. Um, an even larger meteor, a five mile wide meteor, struck the Xixilub Peninsula off of Mexico um, 65 million years ago. That crater is 93 miles wide. Uh, the way they found this is a really fascinating story. And if you're curious about the work of geologists, this is a really cool one to um, read more about. This whole crater, part of it is now in the um, Gulf of Mexico and part of it is on the peninsula. Uh, this was the one that created a global catastrophe that killed the dinosaurs. And then maybe you've heard of a crater right here in our home state, Crater Lake, uh, but this is not a crater. This is actually the collapse of a volcano. So the uh, very tip of a volcano collapsed and then the caldera is what this would actually be called. So Crater Lake, kind of a misnomer, not a crater is not caused by a meteor impact. Um, 